following interview was, was conducted with uh, Leslie Hornvik Parr, Parr. Uh, Parr and Susan Houston Fortune for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, April 20th, 2007, in the Dean's Commons. The interviewer was Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome. Uh, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit uh, where you were born and grown up and things of that sort. I was, you are? I'm Leslie. Okay, yeah. I was born in Washington, D.C. and grew up seven years each in uh, Virginia, Ohio, and Georgia. Came to Purdue from Georgia uh, to, because of the aeronautical engineering. I had written several universities to find out their uh, attitude towards women in engineering, and Purdue was one of the very welcoming ones. I could have gone to Georgia Tech which was seeking girls because it was the second year that uh, there were women there, but I didn't want to live at home. So I came way, way up here. I'd never been to Indiana before, as far west. And uh, halfway through college, my parents moved back to Virginia. So uh, I'm, when I have to say somewhere's home, I can say Virginia. Uh, what was, um, you majored in aeronautics when you were here? Yes. And what was the campus like when you were here? And were there any professors that made an impact on you and anything on the organizations that you joined? Do you remember? <laughs> um, you well, you lived on about campus, though. Well, we're okay. I, I was in Doomey Hall okay. uh, my freshman year. And when walked into Doomey, there's a life-size picture of Amelia Earhart, which blew my mind because I had no idea, even though I thought I knew a lot about her. I didn't realize that Purdue had financed the plane that she was lost in and that she was coming back here to teach after that flight. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was in the right place. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring, uh, we, I pledged Sigma Kappa sorority and met Sue. <laughs> And actually, we had a mutual friend who had told us to look each other up. Yeah. And we've been best of friends ever <laughs> since that instant. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, what was your career path after uh, college? What did you do? <laughs> well, I, in my senior year, I met a grad student in aeronautical engineering who asked me if I would uh, consider designing babies instead of airplanes. Didn't know whether it was a proposition or proposal, but we were in the student union eating dinner, so I felt a little safe. And uh, anyway, I wound up uh, getting married, and uh, he was a captain in the Air Force, and officers' wives were not allowed to be gainfully employed at that time. And so, and end of aeronautical career in that aspect. However, he owned an airplane. I used to claim I married him for his airplane. He's uh, almost 80 years old, and he's still teaching flying. And we fly on vacations various times. Uh, we belong to the commemorative Air Force. We're both colonels, in the, but then everybody who belongs is a colonel. <laughs> and we spend the summer running around going to air shows and uh, raising money for our own wing. What sort of plane do you ha does he have? Well, but we don't have one anymore. Uh, his last one was an Aronka Champ. The one I married him for was a Cessna 120. <laughs> but at the Aero Club, we just read uh, planes from yeah. the club. Can you tell us where you were born and when, when you were born? Tell us that. Where, oh, where I, born I, was, in, I was born in uh, a Georgetown University Hospital in Washington, D.C. on Valentine's Day, 14th of February in 1937. Very good. In the hall. In the hall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's, uh, Su uh, Susan, tell us a little bit about where you were born and early life and school, and etc. Okay. Well, I was born in Hamilton, Ohio, uh, May 22nd, 1936, and uh, I don't remember much. We moved a lot, and when I uh, asked my dad in later years, you know, why we moved so much, he, well, depression. So as, as I ended up, I ended up at, in Milwaukee, was, or a suburb of Milwaukee called Wauwatosa. And I, I started school, and Leslie thinks that, I, that we went to first grade together. I don't remember <laughs> it. In Moore School in Alexandria, in Virginia. Virginia. That was one place we lived. We lived in uh, Hamilton, Ohio, Auburn, New York, Alexandria, Virginia. 
and we lived there when they bombed Pearl Harbor. Then we moved to Milwaukee to take care of my grandmother. And um, so I went all the way through school there. I graduated from Wauwatosa High School, 1955. And since my dad was a Purdue grad, <laughs> I always I was coming to homecoming, and I and I just fell in love with it from the beginning. Sure. And I didn't know was one of those people that didn't know what they wanted to do, but I was going to college. <laughs> and so I came down here and uh, took home economics mm -hmm. and found something in there. And I ended up in uh, the housing option, which apparently doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it, you know, designing. We had architecture and we designed kitchens and that kind of thing, and home management, and I, I wish I could remember the name of the lady who wrote a book, who was one of our teachers, very, I can remember contributing something to her, mm -hmm. uh, but she was wonderful, and they built Stone Hall while I was here, okay. and did, did you lived on campus then until you joined the sorority? Yeah, uh -huh. I, I lived in uh, Sheely Hall to start with, and then I pledged there, and Leslie and I keep being Houston and Hornbeck, we were all, always alphabetical, that's a, partly what got us together so much, but, um, what was the, what was the campus like, was there, and the village, I mean, we were interested well, in that. we could still, you know, walk down State Street, not too far, and the university bookstore looked nice today, sure. familiar place, but we didn't have to go as far to get to things. You know, we didn't reach down as many blocks, or? I would say close. so. You didn't have that highway at the bottom of the hill. Oh, you know. way down at the foot of State Street, yeah. you know, where the river, the river road is. Yeah. So we now is Wabash yeah. Landing and, the, and things of that sort. I, see. I don't okay. remember any of that. But you had tri there were streetcars. When yeah. it came up State Street, you didn't have the streetcars? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we did have a streetcar because we could take it over to town. Okay. okay. And I was just telling her on our way back that uh, what I remember is the movie house downtown with the Amish carts parked next door in the parking lot at the movies. I don't know if the people were at the movies, but anyway, I remember those. I don't know if that still happens. But we could walk around campus pretty well. Um, did it stretch out? You know, where the, air, the airport, of mm -hmm. course, was well, here when you were here. Yes, and my classes were out there after, the, uh, well, gradually, uh, not my freshman year, but by the senior year, almost everything was out there. Okay. And they, and did they have they, they ran a bus. bus. Yeah. They do now for, because Ave Tech is out there, the Ave Tech building, uh, Ave oh. Tech Ave Technology. Mm -hmm. That's where their classes are out there. Yeah. We were just talking about uh, the ice cream at the uh, food science building. It was right over the other side of State Smith Hall. Yeah, well, I don't remember any name, but anyway, right. we would go pop in there for ice cream. Right. And so we, I spent most of my time on this end of campus, you know, kind of ended over there at the physics building or right. had some physics. Um, were the, what, what traditions, did, well, there was, of course, the football and basketball. Did you participate in, did you go to the games and anything of that sort, the athletics? Well, I, I went to be in the card section my freshman year, but I really still don't understand football. And the rest of the time I would study during the games and, and know that my free pass to get in the game would be envied by somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't I, share. I did go because my dad played football, you know. When he was at Purdue? Yeah. Uh, what he wasn't very big, but he played football. <laughs> uh, and he lived in the Kappa Sig house. Uh-huh. Very good. And what was your career path after you moved up well, to college? It turned out kind of interesting. I, when I gra was graduating, it seemed like nobody came looking for uh, kitchen planners, which is what I wanted to do. And so they said, well, why don't you go talk to the Eva Goble with the extension service. And so I went and talked to her, and she said, well, you could do extension. And I said, what's that? I <laughs> I always, always lived in the city, so I didn't know what 
4-H and extension was. And uh, makes me think of something, the Girl Scouts. Yes. But anyway, uh, so we did, so I, she said, you know, the Home Economics Convention is in Milwaukee this year. Why don't you go and get a job there? And they have job bureaus. So I went, I did. I got a job with Kim Strand. At home. I lived at home and I got a job with Kim Strand at the convention. And I interviewed uh, Kansas, Oregon, and some other state. And I didn't want to stay in Wisconsin. This sounds terrible, but I didn't. And then I, uh, after the, that, we went out to uh, New York State and interviewed. And then I got, <laughs> it sounds mercenary, but Oregon offered $1,000 a year, more than anybody else. <laughs> so I decided to go to Oregon. And I'd never seen the state. And they were so nice. They, I went for two interviews to Chicago. They interviewed me at the at the convention, and they, then I went to Chicago. So I never saw Oregon until I went out there to work. And uh, I got off the plane, and, and I didn't even know how to pronounce the names of some of the things out there. And I kind of jot this down, Willamette is, you know, not Willamette River and things like that. And, uh, and it was the year of the centennial of Oregon, 19... 1959, and and they were everybody was walking around with beards and having big parties, and and then my supervisor took me to uh, Grants Pass, Oregon, 10,000 people, which was a, a bit of a shocker for me, but it, they were so friendly. I never got homesick. What was the name of the comp? Was it a company you were going to work for? No, I went to work for Oregon State University. Yeah. Uh, doing a, a teaching out there? Well, the extension, sir. In the extension. I was an extension home economist and then with 4-H. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I really enjoyed it for not knowing what I was getting into. And I and I did it only for three years. Then I met my husband during that time. Out and there? Then, yeah. And he's a native Oregonian. And then I went, after we got married, we went to grad school at Oregon State for, we got our graduate degree. And then we started taking off with his. <laughs> he's he's a, got a master's in fisheries. So. Mm -hmm. Then we moved around the state of Oregon. Oh, so you spent most of your time then in Oregon out there. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit now about the Grand Prix. Uh, I understand from Tom Pearson that you people were involved in it, so her more sure. so than me. Well, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I was in the uh, last class engineering class that took practical, the practical subjects of welding, heat treating, casting, those sorts of things, and then it became much more theoretical for the next class. And Mr. Montgomery, Harold Montgomery, was my welding instructor, got a B in welding, and really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, that was the freshman year. The senior year, he called me at Sigma Kappa, and he said, I would like to enter a women's team in the Grand Prix race, and I don't know what. <laughs> he said, well, build the car in my, in my uh, basement, and uh, you'll get a, get a girls team from Sigma Kappa. And I said, I'm not sure I can find any sisters who will help build a car. Well, we'll recruit some boys <laughs> to help build it, and uh, actually, apparently, he already had it mostly built himself. And uh, so I recruited some of my sisters, and we practiced hard with this car, with our helmet and our roll bar. And <laughs> they had set up a practice track over on the Ag campus. And we really took this seriously, and there were uh, Clinton lawnmower engines in the car. And we learned to uh, not hit the brakes when you went around the corner, and then we learned to not take our foot off the gas even, and really got proficient at doing this, <laughs> to the point where during the first heat of the race, our little engine said, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were 48 entries, uh, so they ran two heats of 24 each, and then took the top 12 out of each heat to put them together for the third race for the overall winner. 
and at the time our engine quit, we were so far ahead, even though we didn't complete the race, that we were in the top 12 in our heat. <laughs> but that, that was the end of it. Oh, dear. Whereabouts, uh, with the race, was, where was it held? Was it in, in front of, well, the, the brick in front of, in uh, front of the uh, exec uh, building. Well, oh, there was a brick U. Where it now is the, that's the engineering mall with the MSW. It's across from yes. the uh, visitor's information center. Right, that's yeah. where. Well, when you practiced it, did they have straw yes. going around there? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. were, some, did, were there other female um, entries that particular year as well? Well, we didn't know it until Tom ferreted it out <laughs> while working on this. Oh, we we okay. thought we were the only ones. Oh, okay. Okay. Where about did you practice in the uh, ag camp? I don't recall. Uh, was what day it? They did set it, this up so you could go over there and do it. Uh, oh, but this, this was the first year for it. It was the second year. Second, second year, so yes. it started in 58. Yes. Then, right. Okay. Now there was a, um, at that time, I understand, was it a grand, it was an auto club? It wasn't the Grand Prix Foundation like they have today. Was there an auto club that sort well, of... Well, there, there was fellows in the auto club who thought it up, and they... Tom can tell you. Oh, Did you interview Tom? No, I haven't. Well, haven't. are you going to? Uh, I may not get a chance this time, but we may do it. Because he has the first-hand knowledge of well, how that all Well, there's a publication, went. I think, that's coming out. That yes. He's working on, so that would be in, yes. know, in there. I think mm -hmm. that would and be And I good. would have to just quote to you what I read in that book. Sure. In that. I mean, I told him that I would like, we would like the library for like a copy of it, and I know that he's been working on that. Um, but getting back to our time here. Yes. Right. I, I had one uh, trip to Europe through the Girl Scouts in, coming out of high school, so I'd spent that summer uh, in Europe, and uh, the Girl Scouts paid my way from Georgia back to Georgia, all, every, everything except souvenirs and film. And, uh, so I had to pay back the Girl Scouts by volunteering for two years. And uh, so as soon as I arrived, I went to the Girl Scout office and said, I have all these wonderful slides that I took of our chalet, which is, if you know Girl Scouts, okay. <laughs> and the, the, the Girl the Scouts here is what you're touching? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, in West Lafayette, or in Lafayette. Right. And uh, they, uh, I have a two-year commitment to share, and I'd, be love to, I'd love to visit troops and tell them about winning this trip to our chalet, that how they can apply for it, and so on and so forth. And they said, we have a brownie troop that needs a co-leader. And I said, no, I don't want to be a leader. Well, we really, it's, they live right next to the campus. They meet at this woman's home, and, and it's really convenient, and she really needs a co-leader. And I, I knew that you should take training, and I said, well, I don't, I don't know that I have time to take training. They said, oh, you know everything. You, don't, you, you wouldn't have to take training <laughs> to do this. So I wound up as her co-leader. Well, then, um, as soon as I met Sue, well, I had the two, I was with this woman anyway. She really didn't want to be a leader, and so I grabbed Sue, and we were we, we were really two co-leaders. You're supposed to be uh, 21 or any of that to be a leader, and I said, "We can't. I can't be a leader. I'm not 21." And uh, it was it was phrased just a little bit shakily that that someone could make a judgment and say you're the leader. So we. I had a wonderful troop. We moved up grade by grade with them mm -hmm. and did a lot of camping. I recall the camp of Sycamore Valley. And, uh, but since we weren't 21, we had to take adults with us out camping until our senior year when we finally <laughs> reached the magic age where we could take and out. Car. <laughs> and we had a car. Yeah, I had a car my last year. <laughs> then, uh, and they were in, what, eighth grade? By the time we left, was it? Well, I was a senior nine, so I had an extra semester with them, too, I think. Yeah, they were, well, the parents were so cooperative. Yes. And yeah. you meet with them, uh, how large a troop was it? It's an oh. interesting. Oh, about 16. Yeah, at least 16. So you stayed with them each yes. year, so mm -hmm. they would stay yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. Take them on trips and things of that. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Just camping. Camping yeah. out. Yeah. I don't remember any other No, I don't trips. Either. Most of these is the camping thing. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Yeah. We were both into camping and so yeah. we <laughs> scouts too. Yeah. <laughs> One question on the uh, uh, Grand on the Grand Prix: Was there? Um, you're talking about the heats now. Today, there, was there a maximum today that they have 33 cars? 
that they do. But these heats you had to do with like tryouts, and that's what you were. were no, they just they just took the whole field and cut it in half because it was there were too many cars that could race at the same time. All right, I see. So that's that's why. So they, they just had half. Of, just had two sections, and then took the, the half of the. the Top half out of each oh, section, and then they would for the final the race. Yes. Okay, okay. And was mm -hmm. there um, a celebration afterwards, or did you, did you have a, anything special going on? I don't remember anything. Uh, interesting. I don't. No, interesting. That, yeah. that was it. Was the weather good that that year? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes it. That makes mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, going around that oval, you got to watch the uh, <laughs> the straw and things of that sort. Yes, and yeah. and if we creamed a, a straw bale and, and destroyed it, we'd have to pay for it. <laughs> that was an incentive to <laughs> stay on the track. <laughs> what was uh, your experience on that? Were you involved? Uh, did you do, were you one of the uh, driver too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. there was five of us. And you were in the same group then? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, okay. Mm -hmm. what did, uh, let me ask you this. When you tried to recruit some people, what kind of reaction did you get from the sorority? Were there a lot of volunteers or? Well, Sue, Sue was the first one to come with me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then some others surprised me that uh, that I didn't think would be interested. Yeah. Said, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. And it was kind of fun. We all had black pants and red shirts. And I guess we had helmets. I don't. Know or, we sh or we shared one. Helmet. We shared one, but we had, you know, that was our team. The red and the black. The uh, car that was built was pretty well built, and it was yes. Dr. Dr. Montgomery built it in his home. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a brick surface. I don't know whether it still is. And so a lot of cars, their wheels kind of went like this gradually, and they were out of the race. Uh, others messed with their engines a lot more than we did. Some took off the shrouding, not realizing that an air-cooled engine needs shrouding, <laughs> or it's going to burn up quickly, <laughs> and they learned. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so we're, I think we, we were pretty smart in pretty much leaving it the way Clinton built the engine, and they knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> were there any other... Um, in that particular race, any other cars that were driven by the women as well? We oh. just heard about the one well, there was on a, from Tom oh. that helped. He told her, us last night that she was helping the, there was a group of veterans or something that built that. Oh. And veterans, she, from the war, uh, ve veterans from the Korea. War, Korea. Korea. The Korean veterans. Okay. Yeah. Who we didn't know about had, Who also had a car? Apparently. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, then, af then afterwards, did, did you? That, that was the last. Did you participate another year too while you were here? Oh, we were gone. gone. Oh, that, so that you was our senior, senior year. Yeah. Senior year. Okay. Okay. All right. What was? Um, tell us any other events that, that occurred in your sorority. Did you participate in any other kinds of things when you were living on campus? Well, one of the things that I liked was music. Okay. We. Uh, I did the university chorus. You know, every day had you sing. University sing. University sing. sing. Oh, right. That was a fun time. That was, uh, we would take part part in that as a house, you know. And then we, I can remember people dressing up in the bear. Remember the bear cos costumes? Oh. Anyway, oh. oh, and then we sang a song that went with it. I can't remember, but it was funny. And um, and that, that just reminded me of something else. That uh, well, the one thing that it's re that I remember about universe, the singing was that one time I uh, I got the three-day measles. The weekend they were going to sing in Indianapolis, <laughs> and the bus went right by the, by the in, infirmary, <laughs> and I had to sit there and watch them. And uh, that that was a that was a real letdown because I, I enjoyed that. They had a you know, a lot of people, and we had some wonderful convocations, yes. and uh, and the musicals. You know, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the one that uh, seems like it was about a mama or something. Anyway, uh, did well, they had V score? Did they have Victory Varieties? Yeah. Oh, well, Victory Varieties was a riot. You know, we had Bob Hope and yes, 
Victory Ver fun. When I first came here, uh, V Square, that's what their Victory Varieties was on. It was really, yeah. really nice. I had don't have gotten acquainted with them with my father. Mm. You know, coming down here with my mom and dad. Sure. In fact, uh, my brother and sister-in-law would come for like football games, and we go to Victory Varieties mm -hmm. oftentimes either Friday night or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. You know, but of course they don't have it anymore. They don't have it anymore. No, oh, they don't. They don't have V Square. They haven't had it for a long oh. time. I remember what Bob Hope did come one time, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, so we, we had some. There was a. Uh, think of the. Uh, did you ever have the Metropolitan Opera that came here? Yes. Yeah. That, yeah, and Laurel Hurley was a Sigma Kappa, and she came and spent the night at the house. And we oh. had I I I remember, oh, and a lot that's of that's a wonderful opera. Yeah. Oh. Where I, you know, did I? We're in it in, as background people. Yeah. And then, of course, that organ was something else that's yeah. in the music, right, music hall. That's right, yeah. That music hall is really, it, is very nice. Mm -hmm. And they use it, well, of course, that's where they have the, com did they have commencement for you was in the music hall? The Elliott Hall of uh, Music, is that where you graduated from? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They usually We had two different ones, you know, morning and afternoon. Now they run, well, in the spring, uh, that's the largest. So they'll run four. Uh, August, they have sometimes one and sometimes two, and then it, they have a December one, too, as well. Wow. December probably is two sessions, and they'll run that morning. They'll run it at 9.30 or 2.30. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. They have it for the December one. It's at the end of finals week because then there's the break, and so they have it that Sunday right at, mm -hmm. the, at the end of the semester rather than if people – then so they get a, a diploma that – that it's not filled in because grades aren't due in until a couple of days after and that's sent to them. But it makes it easier because once people leave, they're not going to come back, so they have it that Sunday, uh, the Sunday following the finals. Well, what's interesting is we didn't have finals. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's we, had, that. we, had, we had three. It's a tradition that I haven't heard. Oh, yeah. three, we had three tests a semester, mm -hmm. and that was our grade, the, the three together. I li And I when I went to and get so my the first one was just as important as the last. And then they, they, they got the, uh, the the average of what was. Yeah, I liked it yeah. better, really, myself. I and I was prepared in high school for finals. And, well, and I got down here, and they didn't have them. And then I went to Oregon State, and they did have finals. <laughs> and they had quarters, and we have some. We were used to semesters, and the other thing was we had a six-point system for grades, and they had four. So when I changed schools. They had to convert all my grades. Sure, right. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and, point now. and yeah. then we were talking the, the other three point now. Yeah, it was on the four. It was on the six. It was on the four point, I think it is. Yeah. Right. The other yeah. thing that we were just talking about was um, the fact that we didn't have to stand in line for a certain oh, teacher. Yes. You know, we just went to our major professor and signed up for whatever we were going to do. And, and, and then we had a huge, the computer was a, a huge big thing like the, the Univac yeah, yeah right. with, the, with the IBM punch cards and and all our classes were assigned with punch cards and then and our sorority rush was done with punch cards too interesting. yes interesting yeah it was so much easier than you know when I went to grad school and had this luckily in grad school you're not in such a crowd you know a stand in line to get some teacher that's interesting. They didn't have finals. Did you do term papers? They did term papers, but you didn't have finals. There was no, no. final exam. We didn't do much in the line of term papers. Term, term papers either. Huh. Finals is, next week is what they call dead week. It's, uh, no exams can be given and things of that sort. It's a part of a wrap-up. And then the first oh. week in May is final, final oh, exams. Really? And it runs through that. Yeah, That's so a kind of switch. Yeah. And the year, the calendar year is different now. We, yeah, we started about well, like the third week in September. Right. And the semester ended the end of January. Right. And we graduated and Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had a break from Memorial Day to come back. For yeah, they changed the calendar some years ago. Now, did you have, um, did you have a fall or spring break? Like anything there like was an Easter break. Easter vacation. Oh, oh Easter vacation. Okay. Yes, that and that was a week like, long. Yeah, well, they have spring break, and then we have, in the fall, we have uh, fall break, and that's two days. And really? they have two days off. Usually it's in October. And then in order to... Oh. Tuesday, a Monday, and a Tuesday in order to make up. Then for the Thanksgiving break is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There's no classes on Wednesday, but there's classes on Monday and Tuesday to oh. average it out for the Monday and Tuesday that was for fall breaks. It all averages out, you know. Oh. Right. 
so interesting. What yeah. traditions did, do you do recall when, when you were here? Well, Did another one that just came to my mind was we had a mock political convention. Oh, yes. That was the first time I'd ever stayed here. up all night. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, our house was running Eisenhower for president. <laughs> we had Stassen. Oh. oh, I guess maybe it was the dorm. What yes, was it was the dorm. Okay, yes, anyway, okay. It, when we were in the Coliseum, I guess, I mean a mob scene, you know, but it was so much fun. Oh, I bet. And we, I can still remember the song, you know, aged, you know. No, we were watching, Eisenhower won, but we were running um, Harriman for president. H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N-S-P-A-S-H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N-S-P-A-S-H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N-S-P-A-S-H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N-S-P-A-S-H-A-
creative. I mean, they were, a lot oh, of yeah. people did by, die by hand or things like that. They yeah. all were. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this, both of you. Uh, what is one of your longest memories of Purdue? Can you think of one? Well, the, I think the most favorable memory okay. actually is the race. Okay. Is that Grand Prix race because uh, in engineering, I didn't have a lot of time to, to do a lot of other things. My freshman year, I joined the orchestra and decided that was taking too much time, that I just couldn't afford that much time right. for it. And I did, did enjoy the convocations, sure. uh, those things, but uh, we were laughing about, talking about last night, uh, I, I, I dated people to, just so that, but it was platonic, because I'm going to be a girl, um, girl scout, I'm going to be a, an engineer, and I'm never going to get married, and so on. And my senior year, I had Paul, who liked all the opera and that sort of thing, and we, and that's the only thing we did. We just went to cultural events, but that was our date, really the extent of our dating. And then I met Gordon in class, and we stood out because he came as a grad student, but his degree was from West Point Military Academy, which was sort of civil mechanical, so for, he didn't really have a aeronautical background, so they put him in a bunch of senior classes. And there were, we're the only two in class without a beard, because the senior boys all grew beards until the football team won the first game. <laughs> and so that's what so we guys kind of stood out and got to know each other that way. And the... And so this was my buffer zone from that I had two boyfriends, so I'm not getting serious. And the sorority was always honest to, you know, you really should be engaged by the time you graduate. So on. we had to eat G the lemon because we weren't engaged. And uh, so it was, but it was kept the sorority sisters off my back, too. But the day of the, I, they, I said, all of a sudden somebody said, what are you going to do the day of the race? And it was like, ah! How am I going to introduce them? <laughs> but we were all out there at the airport, which isn't all that big, so we managed all three to come together at the same point. And it turned out the two of them knew each other already. They just didn't know they were dating the same girl. But uh, And then Gordon and I just flew either went flying or studied on all our dates. So I <laughs> yeah. What about you? What's your favorite memory? Well, actually, one of my favorite memories, I was a member of the Student Religious Council. And I've just met the nicest kids all over, you know, from different churches. And we used to divide up all the cards, which I doubt if they even ask people what church they went to anymore. But we, we knew what church everybody went to, and we divided up these cards, and we had, you know, we had these groups with... And, it, and then just a part of that, and then my own group, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, yeah. I met some nice people and went to the different uh, foundations, as they call them at right. that time, exactly. around town, right. around yeah. the campus, and right. did that kind of thing, and that kept me busy. Yeah. That know. reminds me, I was active in the Canterbury Club. What uh, sort of club? That's the Episcopal. Oh, I see, it was one of the clubs. That, okay. yeah, yeah, one of them, yeah. yeah. And they have and a every, lot of we, There were four of us there that, that played bridge every Sunday afternoon for an hour or so. Uh, not, not, but anyway, and it was, and you could get, there, we made dinner there, too, because mm -hmm. dinner was not served yeah. in the dorms or sorority <laughs> on Sunday night. Oh, you're bringing back that. And, but, but one of the foursome was blind, and he'd been blinded in the Korean War. And so we played with this a man or a man. Okay. In fact, his wife was one of the other two. And uh, so we played with the Braille cards. Well, we got, we got so you could re read the Braille with your eyes. So, so we were always kind of trying to avert our eyes <laughs> that we not look sure. at, at anybody else's hand. You know, focus on your own. <laughs> right. yeah. And it, uh, it, it, was, it was lots of fun. What was um, Lafayette like? Was there much uh, activity down there in the city in Lafayette? Did you get down there very often? I, I, I came. The Episcopal Church was over in Lafayette, and I was saying, "How did I get there?" I, I know. Well, we did. That was very. I must have taken the, maybe they, they used to have the streetcars. Or yeah. I've seen pictures of that, or, or maybe some. Well, maybe we went to Canterbury House, and people with cars sure. drove. Yeah, yeah we I had some of that. I, it was. It didn't seem to go as far, <laughs> you know, beyond the center. 
Yeah. When, when you went over the bridge yeah. to, to Lafayette right. Courthouse. Yeah, and then our church started out over there too, and then they built a new one over here. And okay, that's a Christian Science Church. Okay, they okay. built one on this side of campus. Yeah, and then we they let us shoot, meet there, so that was really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like I said, the, the going over there to the theater, and then we did shop down there a bit too. There was some nice department. I think it was a nice department store. Uh, maybe it was, was Lowe's, Lowe's there. Lowe's was there. Yeah. That department mm -hmm. store. Of course, that's been, there, isn't a, there are some small stores down, but there's no department It didn't store. look quite as great today when we came by as it used to, to me. <laughs> it's changed a lot over yeah, But the courthouse looked very nice. Yes. Like right, it's been redone. all cleaned up. Right. And now there's the mall, so there's Tipica New Mall on the, on the far side out there. People go out to the mall. Oh. There's several big malls that have been built up. Yeah. The Market Square is still there. In summary, any... Any closing comments you'd like to say? Well, it's really nice to be see what it looks like now. I mean, I've been reading the alumnus, you know, every year, and and uh, did I'm you ever come, did you ever come back for any games after you left at all? Did you, did you know? But you follow us. We made the polls finally. <laughs> 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 We're on national TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any any final thing you'd like to say or? I don't either. I'm just. I was glad that I transferred out of something else and decided to come to do this this week. And Good. Come yeah, back and that's nice. See yeah. what because Good. Tom, you know, Tom, I, I said I wasn't coming, and Sue did too. And uh, he talked. He called me up and talked me into coming. Sure. And then I had to talk my husband into coming with me. And he Is he with you as well? No. Oh. He well, but we made reservations for two. And then Sue called and said, I've changed my mind. I'd like to come. And Gordon <laughs> said, oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. <laughs>